Hey everybody, with Pi back at you again with another video. So this video is going to be a tier list. So this tier list is going to include versions of, version uh, 0 0.19.1, the quick balance patch uh, they implemented. Uh, so we're just going to go through it. Let's uh, start cooking. So um, I'm not a big fan of the colors here, though. I don't know. I feel like blue should be here and red should be there. Uh, whatever. All right, Countess. So y'all know me. I love Countess. Uh, she's my favorite character. Even now, I use her to get the platinum level in uh, ranked. Um, but the problem is that Countess is... Uh, she gets beat up in lane. Uh, she punishes anyone in low elo, though. So take note of that. She punishes a lot of people because they don't know how to really play against her. If you watch one of my Countess videos, if you understand, if you learn how I play Countess and you try to copy the way, which I think is relatively easy, um, right? Uh, you can cook with her. I'd put her in S tier for low elo. Uh, but even even if you have people that actually kind of understand and mid and knows how to punish you a bit, she takes a while to scale. So if you have a team that gives up in two seconds, that's your problem with Countess, right? Uh, I'm going to put Countess, I think at this point in time, you know, I'll change it up. We got to put a baseline, right? But I'm going to put her on the C tier. I think she's pretty much kind of like average. You can play her, but she has nothing that's really too strong in her kit or something. The only thing she has is a click on ultimate, but you have to be close to range. You can get CC'd. That's the only thing in her kit that she has that really, you know, that, that no other mid laner truly has. Like, it's just, that's kind of it. And it's it's kind of lame. Uh, she gets punished pretty easily. So C tier. Uh, Crunch. Now Crunch is getting some pretty big buffs with augmentation and all that. Uh, a lot, some some base tankiness, some health and HP is coming along. He does really good damage. Just kind of fell off because of other characters being so strong. Um, you know, and I'm going to say that Crunch is going to be, he does a ton of damage. If you learn how to play him and one trick him and you really take advantage of him as soon as he hits level six, he does a ton of damage. You can really stun knock someone, set up kills for people. Um, he is really strong. The problem is that he is easy to get CC to get, to lock him down. He's a big character. He doesn't have any type of, um, uh, you know, invis or invulnerable like gap close or anything he's relatively predictable it just has a really strong in you know engage but then kind of falls off he doesn't grab anyone he's kind of stuck in the dirt unless he uses ult to get out um you know so i i think with the buffs he's going to be really strong and there is a lot of viability to him right because he outputs so much damage and catches people pretty well so i'm going to put him on a b list uh, especially with the patch it with the changes in the items coming out in version 0 19.1 uh decker now decker is getting nerfed right but the thing is the kit is still there her you know her stun is still there her her gate is still there her proton blaster is still there the, the chance of decker ever really getting below a is gonna be extremely rare uh you know she did ha she was honestly borderline s tier if not s tier for a support because she has range to provide poke has ways to engage and disengage you know very skill shot oriented though but very strong as a good support um but she's a she's an a for me now drongo got a nice little buff um well it was kind of a bug fix then they gave him a little bit of nerf on his e which is his uh his um wasteland rounds i think Basically, it was uh, every shot got nerfed like five damage it was early game. It's not necessarily too drastic, but he's just a really strong carry. And with the current nerfs to Sparrow and whatnot, he's just a, a safe laner due to the boomerang. He can still, he's able to poke and he's able to get some long range farm. His ultimate applying shred damage burst. Uh, you know, I'd say that he's borderline like S check. I would pick him as the top. ADC like this is the type of ADC you got to look for I'm gonna it's like it really is borderline because I don't I don't think he's broken enough to get S and that nerf is gonna help him out a bit so you know it's gonna nerf him a bit uh so I'm gonna put him in A but I will say prioritize him in picks because he's a very strong uh st strong character now Fang Mao he didn't get really any changes but we are getting some buffs and, and things like augmentation uh spell slasher I think spell blade uh, is getting that change with the 40 uh, physical power scale, sorry, 40 raw power damage and then base power on, not base power, total power scaling on a lot of spell slasher abilities. This guy is really strong and really good. I, I want to put him like, it's between, the, if you're a one trick Fang Mao, you can carry with him really well if you can get ahead. 
but he doesn't bring, like I said, utility. If someone has the stun, they lock him down. He's done. He's really squishy. If you don't use your uh, your alternate ability properly and you engage with it, you're kind of done. So it's like, I want to put it between the A and B. If you're really good, A. If you're kind of mediocre, he falls off because he's an assassin. But if you average him, you know, you, you play him relatively well, he can kind of, he can cook a bit. It's just that he doesn't provide utility. He's an assassin. So it's between, like... It really depends on the skill level, but I'm going to put him in B because he is really strong. He has pretty good clear, um, you know, and helps and, and destroys uh, objectives pretty quick, too. Um, next, we got Gadget. So now, due to the Gideon nerfs, Gadget has gotten strong, but she still falls, in my opinion, due to being dot based right damage over time her her primary takes a while to, to do damage her uh alternate does takes a while to do damage her gate is only one second root and it only attacks one person she's strong but in terms of solo queue she's a very zone based character it's she's she's between like a and b but we haven't got we've kind of got a nerf on uh on some like uh what was it called Anoxia, you know, so it's a little bit iffy, like to really put her at A and B. It's like I'm talking about carry potential for ranked right here, right? We don't looking at PCC or anything like that or team play. I, I, you know, you put her in like A and B, but she's nothing that's like I would say is like necessarily too spectacular, um, you know. So we got a lot of letters right here. We'll see if we can use any of these. Otherwise, I'd shift people up. But I want to leave S for like super overpowered broken, right? So uh, I'm going to put her in B where I wouldn't pick her unless I absolutely have to. Like this is the mid laner that, you know, they took a Gideon. They took Howitzer. I'm going to put her in B. Uh, now, Gideon did get that nerf. A longer time for his ultimate. Some damage nerf on his ult, um, you know. But it still puts him... On, on the A-list, he still has a really nice escape and engage. He still up with a ton of damage. You know, it does take time for him, but he's a phenomenal character. He provides a lot in fights, provides a lot in solo play. You know, he's a character you do want on your team uh, majority of the time, you know. So we're going to put it, we're going to put him on A. Now, Greystone is getting that buff on his uh, primary ability, although I don't think it's that crazy. Um, still really strong, still very aggressive, uh, offensive and all that, you know. Pretty safe and easy to play him. Can be very annoying. The on-hit build, I don't know. The on-hit build is really strong on him. I don't know if it's still as strong on him, but I'm just going to take him and put him on, on B because if you can play other offlaners, it's better, right? But if you, this is the only guy that you want to play, you can cook with him. It's just that you're going to be kind of affected like Countess a little bit. It's hard to farm with him a little bit. Um, so we'll put him there. Now, Grux, uh, still very dominant in lane, even with the nerfs that he got. Pretty strong nerfs. Still can be uh, countered by, you know, getting a stun on him, shutting him down, not letting him ramp up in fights, right? So, like, I haven't seen him be as aggressive as he was before, and it's there are better off laners now is why I'm gonna take him and put him into B. Um, he's still strong, still offensive in one v ones, but he does kind of fall off in team fights, right? He, he lost some of the sustain uh, in in the previous patch, so he's just a little bit in a spot where it's like he can be aggressive, right? Better than Greystone in a way in terms of in one v ones, but Greystone kind of survive and put a lot more output. Grux, if you catch him off really well, you can cook. If you can, if you can really one trick him and learn him properly, you could push him up into an A tier, you know, higher level. But uh, it's just kind of just what I like see, you know. What forms a CC uh, hard engaging with Grux doesn't work well for him. Um, so I'm gonna put him on B tier. Now Howitzer is really strong. You might see me play him a lot in scrims. Uh, I'm gonna take him, put him in A tier. He's basically, basically, if they took a Gideon, you pick Howitzer, you know, and you, you play off of watching out for the Gideon ult. And you kind of just try to E out of it. Uh, yeah, you're given a lot of time now to even escape it just by walking. Uh, you know, he outputs a ton of damage. You can really prioritize on, on peeling off the enemy ADC or absolutely nuking the ADC. Uh, his Q poke is really good. His farming is really good. Uh, everything about this character is actually really solid right now. Even with Combustion nerf and Noxia nerf. Uh, I wouldn't go like Spellbinder, I think is what it was, Soulbinder. I would avoid that one. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that allows him to stack, um, similar to Obelisk, but based on range. Um, but he's a phenomenal character. I put him in A.
Now, Kalari is really strong for the reason of having invis and being an assassin, but it's also as her ability to steal an objective. She has one of the best objective steals in the game. Her ultimate doing 800, 900 damage and then being able to smite 1k. Where you're able to go invis, come in through every single opening, check for wards and placement, all that. That's kind of what you're playing Kalari for. She has, you know, pretty good gank potential, albeit she's a little squishy. Um, you know, but you have to, you'd have to one trick her. She's a hard character to learn. You'd have to one trick her. I will say that in terms of carry potential, and if you do want to play her and learn her a bit by watching people and whatnot, she is really strong to play. And I think she's pretty up there still. So I would take her and put her in B. She, she is strong. Um, you know, it is nice to have the CC, especially like with bruisers being so strong and whatnot. But if you take out the ADC with her and you're able to get out or you're able to steal objectives with her, you can you can dominate with her. So I'm gonna put her on B. So now Chimera. Chimera is a really easy jungler to learn. Uh, outputs a ton of damage, has a stun, uh, really good CC. You can take him as a really high aggressive uh, jungler, or you could try to back off and peel if you're a carry with your stun. Apply basilisk uh, basilisk uh, stacks. You know he's still a really strong character, uh, especially in low elo play. That I don't think he's an S tier. But I would, I would say that he can be A tier. He's a jungler I would tell people to learn. Like if you don't know how to jungle, learn Chimera. Pretty good clear, pretty easy to fix. Only thing is I see a lot of people when they play Chimera is they go way too, they W key so hard, they jump on somebody, their entire team is behind them. They can't do anything. So, you know, but that, that's the only thing I'd say. I think, but Chimera has a really good build path, getting some little buffs with some of the HP based, uh, you know, uh, items coming in. Um, I think he's, he's a solid pick still. Now Kira, Kira got a nerf, not very drastic. The nerf previously was a lot harder, but she still has uh, percent based damage. She has a gap close. Her clear isn't that great, but if you can farm with her and you're given the ability to farm with her, she does so much damage. She has good safety. You know, I am going to take her and say that I would pick her as an A tier uh, carry. Uh, she's, she is very strong. Um, all carries are still actually really strong. So I'm going to put her there. Uh, don't use her ultimate. Her ultimate's crap. But, you know, don't use it. Play based off of auto attacks and having yourself peel on your secondary ability. Belica. Now, I haven't seen Belica too much. I did get play against her. She wasn't really of a problem. She's still strong as a support more than, uh, than a, a mid laner. I haven't seen her too much. Uh, she did have a buff on her, her alternate ability. Um, you know, and I think she, that you still could definitely play her, but it's just like you have these two characters. I would still pick a gadget over her just for that zoning effect for on objectives. But don't get me wrong. You hit a stun with her. You know you're gonna you're gonna help the team out a lot, but you're very dependent on her primary ability hitting that stun. Um, you know that ability is kind of lost. You're a little bit stuck in the mud. She did get an ult nerf a while ago that kind of hurt her a bit. So it's like I would put her on B C area. It's just like borderline. I do think she provides more than a countess. Um, you know, uh, but there's better mid laners to pick. Is why I'm gonna take Belka and put her on B. There, I would even say, like I said, gadget may be above. Gadget is above uh, Bellica uh, in most situations. <clears throat> so next we got Morgesh. Now Morgesh didn't get any nerfs, which is absolutely insane. She has one of the strongest one v one potentials. Really good farm, good heals. Uh, this the problem is she has no CC, but she can escape a lot of ganks uh, pretty easily. Um, I think she's actually an extremely strong character. I am going to, have to take her and put her into a, an A, a tier. Uh, she doesn't, like I said, have CC. But hey, when you're, the enemy's not focusing you, you're just outputting so much damage at your carry. You just attack the same person as your carry. And you're just outputting so much damage. Maybe you get like an alternate and then throw a primary on top. Now they're slowed. Your ADC has peel. You know, you're just going to eliminate, you're just eliminating people. She has a very easy laning phase. Easy escapes. Um, I have no, like, I, I generally wish that she got nerfed. She's just too easy of a character to play. Uh, really easy to rank up with and dominate. Um, so next on the list we got is Murdoch. So Murdoch, ridiculously strong. Uh, well, I don't, oh, sorry. Let me not say, I don't, I said that literally out of context. Um, Murdoch has an issue where his primary attack 
it used to be higher than other carries, but I said it before, uh, in other tier lists. But now every other carry has the same, nearly the same physical power scaling as him, to where he brings trap utility, right? But his damage and overall utility is kind of low. Granted, if you steal kills with him and you scale up and you farm and you don't have an issue in lane, he will be strong and be very dominant. But, you know, he doesn't have a percent power scaling like Kira, doesn't apply Shred, or also have a percent uh, scaling like Drongo. Uh, so it's like, I, I wanna, I only put him in B because there's better carries, right? There's better carries than him to play. Um, but he is a good carry. It's just that there's better carries to play. It's kind of, that's kind of just it, unfortunately. Muriel. So Muriel is ridiculously strong. Uh, overall for, as a support, has really a good poke. Although it doesn't have a solid escape. But the, the advantage that Muriel has right now is she has one of the best, like, level twos in the game to apply pressure. Um, and in late game, her shielding becomes super useful. Her ultimate becomes super useful. And at the same time, because of her global ultimate, she can build, like, prophecy and split push lanes, get in trouble, teleport to, to the team. It's really good for baiting out prime objectives and stuff like that, getting objectives. She can go split push, bait someone to come and take the tower, and then she gets to ult in and take an objective. You see what I'm saying? So she is really strong. Uh, she does pretty good damage. I am going to say that in terms of being a support, I think I am going to have to take her. I think I'm going to have to put her in A tier. She's just been so oppressive and just high level play that people play her properly and whatnot. You just got to ward up properly. Just don't get ganked because she doesn't have the best escape. But she has good sustain for the carry uh, after like level 6 uh, and throughout that, right? Uh, I have to give her A. Uh, Narbash, Narbash will always be really strong. He applies heals. You know, he's a little bit, loses a little bit against people like Decker and Muriel. Um, but very oppressive at level 6, especially with his ultimate and building true silver still. A lot of the good, a lot of support items still benefit his healing a lot. He has really good sustain. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to take him. I'm going to, I'm going to have to give him, I'm going to have to give him A. He just, really strong uh, as a support a lot of sustain for your team to go into fights and keep him alive uh now phase super strong with the carries being really strong uh, but carry potential here right you got support you can definitely help by rooting the enemies for ganks when your jungler comes and basically getting them uh getting a free gank you know burning free free blinks and whatnot uh really stacks the ultimate onto carries just you got to be careful not to be too trolly. Um, I think FaZe is honestly in a really good spot to just let your carry play safe and farm up, right? Uh, so I do I do think that she probably belongs around A, B tier. It's just that she doesn't have as much damage for save, but she has a really good, a lot of setup and a lot of boosts for your carry to be strong and play safe. So I am going to put her on A because... From what I just see and how people play that, if you just let your carry get fed and, you know, you have your jungler gank you, she sets up ganks so easily, right? So I had to put her there. I haven't seen Rampage too much. Rampage has gotten eaten up by carries, still gets eaten up by carries, especially when you're playing people like Kira, Sparrow, Drongo. So, like, I don't see Rampage, even with the current buff he's going to get, he kind of got, like, a buff nerf, where I think, like, his early game got hit, but his late game didn't or something uh so it's a little bit weird like i don't know what they're doing at rampage they made him a little tankier but i don't think i saw the math that someone did and he wouldn't actually he did the extra health he gets on ult doesn't actually make a difference in late game because i think an extra 50 it doesn't make a difference late game like negligible maybe if you're getting healed by narbash it can help you but it's not that big of a deal you're kind of big unless you really hit a rock which his rock is super useful it doesn't provide as much utility as other junglers in a way so it's like it's tough to really see him being useful so i'm gonna give him a c uh revenant now revenant got that buff he does do a lot of damage but once again is he worth is he worth it compared to even murdoch If he gets a head and snowballs, if you have a Richter support, if you have a Decker support, if you if they're god tier, right, and you're on duo com duo uh, comms with each other, he can be very strong. He does a lot of damage with his fourth shot. 
but he still seems to be lacking as a carry and i'm gonna have to take him and i'm gonna put him c maybe d i'm gonna put him in c because he's just not useful murdoch provides a bit more than him being you know scaling off of the attack speed basically um although he does have a crit crit percent increase it's just there's better carries that's just it now richter's getting some pretty nice buffs with some of the support items getting buffed and all that um i'm gonna take you know, his hook is monstrous, and it's going to get the buff. Decker got nerfed, so he's not going to do as much damage. Um, I don't think any other support got nerfed. So that's actually going to help Richter, with Decker being one of the strongest supports. That he's still a really strong support, but he really counts on that hook still. If he misses it, carries can absolutely demolish. If you're a one-trick, he's S-tier. No doubt. No, if you are if you can one-trick and hit every hook, he's S-tier, no doubt about it. Okay? I'm going to put him... God, this is such a hard thing because he is an A tier by design if you play him properly and you hit a good percentage of your hooks. But with the buffs as well, it's just so tough. He to make a game-changing play, can play off of a stun, especially with the, the offlaners that there are now. It just puts him in a tough time for like really getting your carry like fed, especially in solo queue. It's tough. I borderline put him between A and B. Because he takes so much like skill with that hook, I'm going to put him on B. But if you can, if you like this character and you, you can uh, main him and all that, you can play him in a lot of different roles. He plays three roles, basically. Offlane, jungle, and support. That's the benefit. Maybe I will bump him up to A tier simply because he can take three roles. If you want a solo queue and you're a one-trick pony, he can take three rolls basically so i'm gonna put him there i'm gonna put him at a i think i'm gonna do that now sarath has been honestly a problem she's been really strong uh even with on hit build it's still she's still very effective um i'm gonna take her and honestly i'm gonna give her a tier she's like the master yi uh, from league of legends she outputs a ton of damage um she has really good gank potential based on how much damage output she puts uh, you just need your lanes to let them push in. You know, she doesn't have that much CC, but she has a lot of gap close. She does good damage to objectives. Um, she has pretty good clear once you, once you uh, start cooking things up with her. Um, I am going to put her in A tier. I think she's extremely strong. You can play her in two roles, off lane and jungle, pretty well. She has a nice escape. A lot of ways to get rid of damage. I'm going to have to put her on A. Now, Sebra got some buffs. Uh, and he's really strong, but you got to farm up. You have to be a lot, you know, given the time to farm up in low level play. I'm going to try to tell people to avoid Sev. It's because there's better characters. She, he is really strong though. Um, he is very strong. So that's the, it's a problem. He got a nice buff, but it takes time for him to get there. Still can get melted by a lot of the carries, uh, has a lot of CC, uh, but he has to get there. And that's a one con is you don't know if you're going to get there in, in low elo or in solo queue play. Next is Shinbi. Now, Shinbi surprised me. I think I lowered her before. But she does so much damage. She has a pretty good leaning phase. Uh, pretty good clear, you know. Uh, no CC though, unfortunately. But man, if you could do what Shinbi honestly does... You know, I really do think that she has a potential of being an A... I, she does a lot, uh, a lot of damage. Um, I don't think any items have really been nerfed to her. Spell, Spell Slasher got buffed, I think, on what item was it? Oathkeeper. Uh, so that's going to be pretty big for her. So I'm going to give her A. Now Steel, absolute monster of a character. The only con is that he can be a little bit slow. He doesn't have as much damage, but he has so much CC. And CC dominates in low elo, dominates in high elo. I have to give him an A list. Um, you know, just gotta watch out and not die. Just take take farm what you can. His build path is a little bit weird now. I think going brimstone and just brimstone and not finishing fire. Even fire blossom got a buff. I don't think it's necessarily I don't know, I'm borderline where if there's like a Kwong and a Grim, then I would like avoid fire blossom uh yeah, avoid fire blossom, but at least get brimstone help you with clear. So but I'm gonna put him in A list because he he completely annihilates carries with his uh, secondary ability. A lot of CC. Now, Faye is still 
a really strong mid for getting out of low elo solo queue. This character is still so strong with such solid clear. But understand this, I put her here in A-list, but as soon as you get into people who know how to play, which you can tell, she falls drastically. Um, it's because her ultimate gets cleansed, right? And a lot of people build cleanse. But if you have a tank, if you got to provide peel for your carry, right? Uh, usually the offlaners, the junglers aren't going to really build cleanse. So building, you know, playing her and providing peel or just going into a pit and ulting all five of them, you know, she's going to dominate. Uh, and her kit overall is pretty easy to play. You just throw your uh, alternate ability and then you throw your primary ability. You basically clear the wave uh, after your first item. You know, so she doesn't have an escape as a one con, but she has one of the best carry potentials in, in mid lane um, for for ranked to get you out of, out of low elo. So I have to put her in A, but know that she drops into B and C category easily. She drops to C at high level play easily. So be warned. Now Twin Blast, Twin Blast has really solid clear, has nice range to take off farm with the secondary uh, alternate abilities. You know, he has really good on it build. I think he got hit with his, his, his primary ability got hit this patch, but he's still a really strong character. I got to put him on A. He's just a really good carry still, you know, better than Murdoch, 100%, better than Revenant, 100%. Uh, he, he deserves A. Zaurus, really strong character still, even with like the nurse we got. Um, he might borderline, like he just does, he, 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 his CC, his ultimate guarantees a blink. It's a lock on, you know. If you're in duo and it's a phase and you get both of them, you can get a kill. You can burn two blinks. You can get two kills. Uh, he has really good clear. He has a stun. He has, He's getting buffs with augmentation, all that stuff as well. I might say that Zaurus is going to be... I might say that Zaurus is going to be an S-tier character. Like, I, I think he's... If you want to play a character, he plays uh, jungle and offlane very easily. And honestly, you could probably support, although I don't recommend it. But he's just a very strong character with that ultimate and his burst. And it doesn't look like we're going to see any changes to that for carries and all that. We're going to see him technically get buffed with some of these items indirectly. Uh, so I am going to put him in S. He's a very strong character. Now Sparrow, you know, still up with a ton of damage. Her ultimate's really strong. If you play her with phase, really strong. I know people haven't played her as often, but it's due to that, that Drongo fix. And, you know having the escapes in solo queue you can still dominate with sparrow pretty well with the current build so i'm gonna put her in a i don't think carry we're getting a little bit of like armor added and whatnot but man i generally don't know if it's enough it's, it's, she's between the a and b but it's mainly because she doesn't have an, a true escape right so if you play her and you know how to no jungle timers and whatnot you can still dominate she's between the a and b but Man, if you give her the peel, she's a very strong for for low level play. She still is very strong with her movement speed on her ultimate, allowing her to kind of kite better, uh, and and her her slow as well. That I still have to give her the A tier list, man. She's strong. So here we got Wraith. Now Wraith isn't played as much. Um, strong character overall. I kind of fell off of him mainly because you need like the AOE damage that mid laners present. And he does have a lot of bursts, but he can get punished still. He can you miss a uh, you miss a alternate ability, you're kind of useless. So I gotta take him. I gotta put him in B because if you one trick him, you can be a god and absolutely dominate people with him. Uh, but I gotta put him in B just because of that that risky carries of you know being single target. Um, next we got Iggy. So Iggy has been strong even with these nerfs that we're seeing. Uh, yesterday I played against him. He was very strong. I uh, played him. He was very strong um very strong clear very good objective control that he deserves the a crown even with these nerfs on turrets i don't he got us oil spill burn uh nerf but it's not that much i think he's still going to be a phenomenal character um <coughs> we're taking objectives and all that so i gotta give him a now kuang we're getting nerfs on kuang but he's been an s tier character he may still honestly be an S tier character. He has such good sustain, good poke, good damage. There's not that many actual counters to him. You play him properly, you play him well. Um, he's very dominant. He has good escapes, you know, uh, for staying in lane, good sustain as well. 
that I'm I'm even with the nerfs. I saw the shield got nerfed, but he got a damage increase. I think on his RMB, it's tough. Like I want I, I want to put him in A and S tier. It's gonna depend on the nerf. I'm gonna borderline put him A and S tier. Like if the nerf actually turns out to not be as oppressive on his on his sustain and whatnot in lane, then I'd say S. But he's just such a strong pick now, man. He has such solid sustain. You know, and if you play him and one trick him, he's an absolute monster. This is a tough one between A and S. I might have to give him the S because you can play two lanes. It allows you some free style there, you know. We'll put him there. Next on list, Argus. So Argus has been uh, relatively slow. You haven't seen him too much, but the good thing is you can play him as a support and a mid laner. And he's strong in both of those roles. Uh, he has really good clear in mid lane. Uh, which allows him for good rotations. The stun is really good for peel, really good for engages or setting up uh, stun locks and all that. Um, that he does belong in the A list in solo queue, um, you know. And people are gonna go, "What the heck with gadget and all that?" It's just because gadget zone based. You throw an ultimate there, the ult stuck there. This character still can move, output damage in certain scenarios. She's very dot based and zone based. He's also uh, he's more technical uh in terms of having to place you know when to who you're kind of targeting in a way you're you're allowed more you're allowed more with him i don't know if that makes sense it's just that you throw your ultimate down and people get out of it that's kind of it you know him he can slow people down provide utility there's there's a term for that i just can't think of it right now but he's still very strong. So I'm going to put him even above above Gadget. This is for solo queue play, like I said. Gadget turns into a high, very good character in high level play. In solo queue play, I personally would go Argus. Um, next we got Grim. Now Grim is getting the nerf on his passive. It's, it's a good nerf. Uh, I'm curious to see how strong he's going to be. I would still pick him over Murdoch. I'd pick him in A, a tier uh borderline like s tier still he still does true damage it's still constant magic power we did get buffs though to like to all magic resist items they got magic resist increases so curious to see how that's gonna be unfold just in all all mid laners uh casters and um magic power users but i'm gonna put him in a list he's a very good carry still uh aurora is an absolute beast s tier uh Pretty good clear, even with the nerf that it looks like to be coming. Um, can completely shut down junglers coming into coming into objectives. Um, shuts down teams coming into objectives. Really good CC and sustain. You can play her off lane or jungle, even support. She provides a lot of utility, really good damage, really good sustain. Becomes a nuisance. She deserves it on S. Um, Terra, so now Terra, I've seen her uh, not too much in rank because she's always banned, but she provides a lot of utility. In solo queue, she absolutely dominates people who don't know how to position properly and what they need to focus and prioritize in fights. She is borderline S and A. Like, what would I do? She's even getting damage buffs. She's getting a shield to nerf, so she's not going to be as sustainable. But her kit is so strong, especially with that Q applying so much stacks to then get the root for for uh, for uh, ganks. And her, she still has a pretty eight percent nerf on her dash. It's borderline A and S tier. I'm probably gonna put it on S because she counters CCs, and people in solo queue are already bad at countering CCs, so are are bad at you know how to play CCs properly and stun lock and whatnot. So I'm gonna give her. I am going to give her the S tier. So this is my, my overall list. Are there any changes I want to make to this list? I think these guys are all in C tier pretty evenly. Um, I think these guys are all practically in a pretty decent spot. This guy could move down maybe just because of utility sake. This guy could. I just better A carry. It's the only reason why I put him down in B. Uh, same with Bellica. Just better mid laners. Kalari. I could put her in A if you're really good with her, you know, and really try to prioritize her. Um, Greystone B, yeah, just better off laners with these three up here. Uh, and all these guys, 
Yeah, I put all this the same. This is my opinion on my list. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's, it's a long video. Let me know what you guys think of the tier list. And if you guys like my tier list, or you guys absolutely hate it, let's discuss. You know, this is kind of kind of for fun, right? And this is just my opinion on things that of characters I want to see on my team, uh, and also characters that are good for solo queue ranked, not team play. This isn't uh, this isn't PCC style. This is solo queue ranked uh, style. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think. So on that note, have a good one. Good luck in your games. I'll catch you later. Peace.